I have studied over 300 websites built on high level and here's what's actually killing their sales. It's not bad pricing, it's not bad web design, but it's because of the fact that they're breaking a three-step flow, which I'm going to cover in this video. Let me show you what's going wrong and exactly how to fix it. What I'm going to do in this video is walk you through three things. The first is run you through the three-step system that I use when I build websites for my clients and for myself. Number two, I'm going to show you common mistakes that I see on a lot of GHO websites. And three, I'm gonna show you how to fix those mistakes so you can build a website that gets you sales. The way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna walk you through different websites that I've built for my clients. More specifically, I wanted to show you this hair salon template right here. I'm also gonna be showing you this website right here for the solar niche. And then last, I'm gonna show you this one right here, which is a mobile car detailing business template. So I'm gonna walk you through the mistakes and everything else as I go through these different websites. Number one for the actual system is I wanted to show you this three-step system that I used. The first thing that we need is we need to send traffic to our website. The second thing is we need to build trust on our website with our prospects. And then number three, we need to enable conversions. So super simple. And I'm going to walk you through in this video exactly what each of the stage is. The first thing to get a sale is that we need to get attention. We need to drive attention to our offer, to our website. Now just imagine having the best, beautiful, highly converted website, but you have no way of getting traffic on that site. It's going to be useless without any traffic. So on the one hand, there's the mistake of not having any traffic on your website. And then on the other side, or on the other hand, which is something that I see a lot of GHO agency owners do wrong, is that they're sending the wrong type of traffic to their website. Imagine that I had this beautiful website right here. Let's pretend that I was a solar provider company. And I've already spent a lot of time creating this website right here, but I have no sort of strategy as to how am I going to get homeowners to land on this website to be able to convert them and then get them to book a call. It would be the same problem if I had a beautiful website like this one. And let's say that now in this case, I run a mobile car detailing business in Miami, but the type of traffic that I'm getting on this site is students that live in a different city, let's say Orlando, no matter how much traffic I bring on this website, because of the fact that first of all, the traffic that I'm sending is not in my location, or second of all, the people or the profile of people that are landing on this website are not people that have cars that are more affluent individuals. It's going to make it so that later in my funnel, my conversion percentage is going to be low. And if you don't have this from the beginning, everything else that you do afterwards is going to be affected. Imagine that I'm running two offers and I'm sending traffic to this uh, website, it's kind of like an A-B test, trying to see which of these two offers is going to be better. If I only send 100 people, it's going to be very hard for me to make any sort of accurate decision based on this data. I would need to send more traffic in order to have a concrete decision, which is again another mistake that I see a lot of websites on high level make. So at this point, you may be wondering, how do I bring traffic or the right traffic to my website? The thing is, there's different ways. One way could be ads, another way could be SEO, another way would be to create organic content or even have cold outreach. Let's say you do ads versus SEO, the way that you structure your website is going to be different. So in the ads example, a website that has multiple pages like this might not be the best solution. In that case, it'd be better to have a one page that solely optimizes on getting a lead coming from Facebook ad or from a Google ad. However, if I am trying to get traffic organically through SEO, a one page final is not going to cut it. In that case, I would have to create different pages, even have pages specifically for an area or a service that I do. So just things to keep in mind, which depending on what type of traffic you bring into your website, it might dictate how you structure the rest of your website and the sales process in general. The second step is the trust stage right here. And this is something that I see a lot of GHO websites do wrong as well. The second step is getting a prospect to trust the offer, the product, the service that is being presented to them on the website. And this comes down to having a clear message that is relevant and talks specifically to your prospect about the specific problem that they have or the specific solution or dream outcome that they want to achieve. Now we do all of this so that when they land on their website, they think to themselves, wow, this is exactly what I've been looking for. So whether you're a hair salon like this right here, or you're a restaurant, you want to make sure that the way that you present your website, which I'm going to break down in just one sec, makes it so that the prospect builds trust right away and is compelled to take the next step. Now we can also build trust not only with clarity, but with credibility. So this would be having reviews, case studies, transformations, or even measurable outcomes. I wanted to show you this website right here. You see that it's a funnel. It's very simple. But the first thing that I have right here is a section trusted by brands that win right after this. 
if I also had a VSL when I'm explaining, breaking down what my services are, how I help a specific business with a specific problem is going to make it. So if a prospect is on the site right here, uh, we'll build their trust as well. Now, the thing with testimonials, which is a mistake that I see on some GHO websites is let's say that my dream outcome was here that I bring more leads to a business. If my testimonials right here is of people talking about the fact that I built them a beautiful website or that I took over the social media, there's going to be a disconnect between the actual value prop or what I'm claiming to solve right here with the actual testimonials. The testimonials that I choose to put on my website right here should be related to the fact that I brought more leads to these business owners right here. So not only being credible, but being consistent with your messaging, being clear, and then also your position. So you want to make sure that you shift from, hey, we're so awesome, take a look at us, to, hey, this is exactly how we can help you or this is exactly what you need. So it's kind of like a subtle shift, but the messaging and how you structure your website stops being about you and your company and more about how you can help your prospect. What this looks like right here is, for instance, again, we have this hero section. The first thing that I have right here is a trust signal, so 4.7 rating on over 200 reviews, positioning myself in a way that I have social proof as well. Now this section, I was talking earlier about the fact that you wanna make sure that you have measurable outcomes. Now in this website, I'm doing measurable outcomes as well. I'm talking about the fact that I've helped over 150 clients, that they're happy, I have seven years of experience, and I've detailed over a thousand cars. If I am a hair salon in Seattle, instead of saying, hey, we do awesome job with hairs, what better way to show your potential prospects what you've done and having photos of past clients achieving the dream outcome that potential new clients might want to achieve. Having images in strategic ways, not only to show, let's say, your office or your people, but also the dream outcome, like the services and the end result that you've been able to provide for different clients. So you see that there's different ways to create trust on your website, structure it in such a way that you stop making it about your website or your company and more about your prospect and what you can do for them. Now, the third step of this process is conversions. So let's say that you do have the traffic on your website, you've built trust. Now you need to enable the conversion. So let me just go down here and show you what that is. Now, before I dive deeper into conversions, a mistake that I've seen kind of relating to the previous step is that a lot of DHL agencies or companies that have websites go straight into having crazy pop-ups, CTAs, trying to convert somebody to buy, but they've skipped step number two. So before you have a, some sort of like way to try to hook people in, make sure that you have built that trust with them, whether it's on your website and in the rest of your marketing strategy. The thing with conversions is you want to make sure that you have clear, well-placed CTAs. You want to make sure that you remove risk as much as possible and then maximize gain and then remove bad friction. So there's bad friction and good friction. Now, good friction will be some sort of vetting questions. Make sure that people that are booking are actually qualified. And then bad friction would be having a bunch of unnecessary pop-ups, different hoops that a prospect, even if they were qualified, have to go through. So just go through your website's customer journey and see where are places where it's hard for your ideal prospect to get in touch with you? And then where are places where maybe you're making it too easy so that people that are not qualified are also going and booking your services or giving you a call or whatever it may be. The key with conversion right here is we want to frame it as we're not pushing a prospect, like well, we're not trying to force a sale. We're simply guiding them saying, hey, you have a problem. We have a solution. This is the next step for you to get this problem solved by us. Actually go through your funnel Make sure that your customer journey makes sense. You're not sending them to a page with a broken link or making them kind of like go in a loop, kind of the things that I've seen on DHL websites in the past. Now, to give you an actual example, I wanted to show you the card detailing website right here. You see that the whole website is kind of like black and I'm only reserving green for the buttons or when I want to create accents. You see that this right here, I've made it so that it's very cool and easy for somebody to get in touch. I have call to actions in all places throughout this website. My call to actions are easy to read as well. That's a mistake that I see on a lot of GHL websites. They have buttons with a low contrast ratio. My website or my buttons are standing out against everything else. And you put them in strategic places so that no matter where a prospect is on a website, they can still click the button to get in touch. So that is the three step system that I use when I'm building websites for myself, for my clients. And it's a system that when you break any of these steps right here is going to make it so that you destroy your sales. If you're an agency that wants to start selling high ticket websites to your clients, but you don't have the time to build them from scratch, learn how to code, learn about web design, what you can do is get access to my sell and deploy website pack. It has all of the websites that I showed you in this video and a bunch more. If this interests you, click the first link in the description and get access to my sell and deploy website pack.